and Shabbat Shalom to you over the pond, uh, Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Zakaria, and the rest of the family that's with us. Okay, great. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it short. As you know, that what we decided last week, uh, lectures will be sent out privately to the doers. And uh, I believe that uh, that has already happened. We are already in motion. We are fixed, and this is no longer a joke. And let me tell you, the joke will be on those people who actually didn't heed the warning for the last two years. They were the ones who become the jokers and the laughers, and they'll be laughed at. No, not us. Let me tell you what happened over here, and let me tell you what I've been saying all along. Wherever the Kohen goes, the blessings goes with him. Wherever the Kohen goes, doesn't matter what country. I came to this country around nine months ago. It's almost nine months today, or thereabouts, and uh, I can tell you that I just, you know, read of news yesterday that Russia has handed a blank check to Pakistan and said to Pakistan, their foreign minister came to Pakistan, you know who the foreign minister is, those of you who, who any of you know who the foreign minister is of Russia? It's not, it's, it's, it's not that hard, hard a name to pronounce. He's all over the place, and he's been a foreign minister for, oh my goodness, countless years now. He's, he's, he's been around a while. His name is Sergei Lavrov. That's a foreign minister of Russia. Brush up on your history. You know, you live in the world. You need to know what's happening around you. Don't just go around like headless chickens. You must know these things because they will affect you one day. Okay, we have a break over here. Let's reconnect. To pal talk internet issue and uh, resolved you should be able to hear me like I said his name is Sergey Lavrov Sergey Lavrov visited this country a week ago he handed a blank check to Pakistan and he said that whatever you want we are willing to do and he actually gave more than what America has ever given Pakistan I can tell you that or, or Europe and he ended up saying and Pakistan, as I quote, as I told you last week, Pakistan's going to get a $2 billion worth of oil pipeline that's going to directly come from Russia. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. There was a little break. So it has been recorded, what I'm saying. So Sergey Lavrov was in this country for a visit. He is a foreign minister. And what I was saying, that you guys need to keep up with, you know, who is who. I mean, I'd be very surprised if you Americans don't know who your foreign minister is. <laughs> That'd be kind of a little shameful if you don't know who the foreign minister is. And if I asked you who's the president, you might say, well, we're not sure who the president is. So, yeah, be careful about that. You need to know who's who because it's kind of important, you know, who, who rules which country. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a little uh, internet lag today, but uh, basically, uh, like I said earlier, that a... Russia is going to build a pipeline into Pakistan and that's going to cost $2 billion and we will have direct oil coming in and probably at very cost-effective prices. I can tell you that. And we're probably not going to be uh, you know, held to ransom by the Arabs because you know they give you oil and plus they, <laughs> plus they give you a stick as well. And, and when they're upset with you, they want their money back, like little children. So I don't think we'll have that relationship with Russia. So Russia is going to put $2 billion pipeline and Russia is going to make sure the companies that are there to do it because this project, by the way, was first spoken about in 2015. It never got done because of sanctions. But now in spite of the sanctions, which Russia has said, this will be done. This will be completed, irrespective of sanctions. We don't care about sanctions. So all these sanctions do is make nations stronger. They don't make them weaker. It just forces nations to realize that they have to do things within and they don't have to rely on other people. And that is something that I think that we all realize that sanctions don't work. They're just a threat. They don't work. A waste of time. And, uh, we'll, we'll keep it going. No worries. But remember, it is recorded, so... Uh, no need to get your panties in a wad, okay? It, it is recorded, and, and uh, you you will hear it on YouTube. 
Okay, yeah, let's start again. Uh, can you hear me now? I've just switched over to another router and hopefully this is a bit better. But we've got a little connection difficulty over here, which is okay. So what I was basically saying that uh, we have two deals going on right now. You know, this is a blessing of the coin in the country. We have one deal with Russia handing us a blank check over here saying, hey, you know, what do you want? And Pakistan needs gas because they're not gas suppliers. So they've already approved a gas project, $2 billion pipeline coming from Russia to us. I mean, it may take one to two years to complete, but we will have it. Number two, which I was kind of surprised that it just happened. Like it happened this month that China came in and China started, guess where I was going all this? Remember I was going to Karachi, the, the hub city, you know, the coastal city of this country. I went there three, four times and I stayed there maybe at least a month. I stayed there in, in, you know, in the same place, maybe 10 days, 12 days at a time. And guess what happened over there? Well, in Karachi, what happened, interestingly, is that uh, China announced that they are starting a nuclear reactor. And there was a nuclear reactor project going on somewhere along there. And they've actually kick-started it on a pilot project and it's called the Hulong-1 unit. And it's expected to generate nearly 10 billion kilowatts of electricity annually, enough to meet the annual electricity demand of more than 4 million Pakistani households, equating to a 3.12 million ton reduction in standard coal use and an 8.16 million ton reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. It's also the equivalent of planting more than 70 million trees, by the way. So <laughs> Pakistan is getting good, good stuff. I can tell you that. So that, that's basically where we are. And uh, it's wonderful. It's great. I'm sorry if you can't hear it. You can probably hear it at the end uh, when it's all recorded and put out. And as you know that we're not putting out any Torah. We're not putting out any Torah today. So forget about Torah. This is nothing to do with Torah. But it is and it isn't. Because Torah was given to people and they just, you know, they just stamped on it. And and I think now it's time to just go straight to the, straight to the straight talk. As they say, straight talk. There used to be a program, British program called Straight Talk. And, you know, where a leader used to, where a, a host used to ask another leader some difficult questions. Uh, and then the leader had to answer it. Yeah, I believe that it's it's probably my internet is not great. It's, you know, it is using a little little device, and, and sometimes the device works, and sometimes it's a little it's a little up, you know up in the air. So I'm going to try and 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 play my. We're not going to play games, you know, like like people did with us last, you know. 10 years, 15, 20 years, where they come for three months, then they disappear, or they stay for four months, then they disappear. In order to prove your obedience to the Torah, you have to be with us for six months. You have to be a tither. You have to be a pair of zadakah. You have to do your festivals. You have to prove yourself. And if you cannot prove yourself, then you are out. We will not accept you. Simple as that. So that is our criteria. It's very simple. It's not hard. And it is easy to understand. The, the other thing is that Rabbi Kiva told me the other day that he has a timely message that he would like to uh, give out to the people. And I'm waiting for his message when it comes through. I, I shall post it to the relevant people when it arrives. In the meantime, uh, our Pashas today, if I can uh, uh, pull it up, give me a second. Okay, uh, Rabbi Kifa, I think that uh, I'm having problems this end. Uh, let me just just change my router over and I'll, and I'll be with you in, give me a minute.
Okay, Rebbe Kifa, what I'll do is my message is very short. I'll post it. And I've already sent your message that you posted me this morning. It's already gone out to the doers. And this message that, that I started, I'll probably join it together. And anything that you say, I'll join it together. And I'll post that as well online. But the other one will remain offline. So with that, Rebbe Kifa, I'm going to pass it to you as my connection doesn't seem to be uh, very good today, which is probably not a bad thing. <laughs> okay, have a great Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom, uh, Mishpacha. This is the Kohen speaking. Okay, just a brief, as you already know, the situation on the ground in uh, Ukraine, Europe, the war and all that. And as I said last week, that war equals business. These days, wars are not started because they're good or bad. Wars are usually started. It allows different sides to test their weapons. So they can make further sales to other countries after the war stops or even during the war. And also it means that bullets, guns, missiles equals dollars, equals money, equals wealth. So, and at the same time, pharmaceutical companies that will be treating the injured means money as well. So all around, it's all about, it's all about the almighty dollar. You know, how much money can somebody make? And this rhetoric about Russia did this and America did that and Europe is doing this. This is all a lot of baloney. I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't waste my time with it. I wouldn't even think about it because this is just simply, simply politics on the face of the earth that you're seeing different leaders making different statements, different accusations. And uh, each person that, you know, has a statement has a reason for that statement. I, I don't think we need to go into it because uh, it is not our business to start wars or to promote wars. But you are here to promote yourself in Torah and to do what is right. As you know that uh, those of you on our doers list, a special message was sent to you, a timely message that you should have all received and uh, if I don't have an email address of a doer, then I did say before that you can forward it to Rabbi Kifa. You have his email address on the website. You have my email address uh, given to you on all the YouTube lectures. It's right you know, in the information page. You can pick it up there and you can send it through. Now, there is actually a criteria of you know who becomes a doer and who doesn't because we're not going to play games, you know, like, like people did with us last, you know, 10 years, 15, 20 years, where they come for three months, then they disappear, or they stay for four months, then they disappear. In order to prove your obedience to the Torah, you have to be with us for six months. You have to be a tither. You have to be a pair of zadakah. You have to do your festivals. You have to prove yourself. And if you cannot prove yourself, then you are out. We will not accept you. Simple as that. So that is our criteria. It's very simple, it's not hard, and it is easy to understand. The the other thing is that Rabbi Kiva told me the other day that he has a timely message that he would like to uh, give out to the people. And I'm waiting for his message when it comes through. I, I shall post it to the relevant people when it arrives. In the meantime, uh, our Pashas today, if I can uh, uh, pull it up, Give me a second. Uh, our Pashas today is Vayachel, which is from the Torah portion from the Bible book of Exodus. For those of you who don't know, chapter 35. It says, Then Moshe gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said to them, These are the words which Yudhevahe has commanded you to do. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day shall be a holy day for you. A Sabbath of rest to Yudhevahe, whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. Now, clearly understand one thing. This lighting of the candles is not counted work, by the way. Lighting a stove is not counted work. I don't care what the Jewish people do today. They've they got their million traditions, and we don't follow those million traditions. But when fire is mentioned with the word work, work means that you cannot start a business or run a business on the Shabbat. However, there are caveats. You know and I know. There are Jewish people in the world, all over the world, 
that have businesses. They have hotels, they have pharmaceutical companies, they have Hollywood production companies, they have news companies. Those companies do not stop on the Sabbath. They don't say to them, oh, okay, everybody, you know, Friday night, that's it, you're all going home and don't come back. Don't show your face till Saturday night. They don't do that. Those companies continue to work. So what they do is they employ people that are non-Jewish and they continue to do the work. So yes, that is permitted, by the way. That is allowed. That is a way rabbinic Judaism got around it to, to making these things happen. And of course, if you are a doctor, if you are a nurse, and you happen to be a Torah abiding student, you are allowed to be a doctor, you are allowed to be a nurse, you are allowed to go to duty and save somebody's life and feed somebody medicine. But as you, remo as you, as you remember our uh, saying on that, our uh, jurisdiction on that was simply this, that if you have to work on a Sabbath, Sabbath belongs to God. If you have to work on a Sabbath, then the money belongs to God as well. And that money has to be paid in to the to the towards your uh, tithe and the car, you basically have to deduct that Saturday's money. It doesn't prevent you from working on a Saturday as a doctor, nurse, policeman, a military person, etc. But it, it does mean that you have to work yourself out what that money is for that one day and then you have to give that in. Okay, so that takes care of that. And sec secondly, also, there is no such commandment that says you cannot cook on the Sabbath. You know, the, these ideas that came out of rabbinic Judaism have no foundation today whatsoever. You know, I told you lighting a fire means to do not start a business. But even today, the Jews have got around that by employing other people who do their businesses. So, again, you know, you, you know that, I know that, now everybody knows that. So, it is saying that what happens after this particular incident that Moses and asked the children of Israel that they had to give an offering. He says, take from among you an offering to Yudhe Whoever is willing of heart, let him bring it as an offering to Yudhe Wahe, gold, silver and bronze. Well, today people, you know, you know and I know that people are so brazenly, um, how should I say it, uh, tight, tight might be the right word, so, so brazenly tight that they rather spend money on an iPhone than they'd like to give money to God. That's just the way the world is today. You know, they're, 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 they're happy to buy their next iPhone. They're not happy to pay their tithes. They're not happy to pay their other cars. So those of you, include the leaders, by the way, uh, those of you who were part of the leaders who did not tithe, you're out. I've already written to you, and I'm throwing you out, period. No more chances. And those of you who were students who did not tithe, you're out as well. You're no longer part of our private messages. So there's no such thing as giving Torah for free. You know, we've done it long enough. We've been giving free Bibles. We've, we've donated, I don't know, hundreds and thousands of dollars of Bibles over the 20 years or so. And we've stopped that as well. No more freebies. No more free Bibles. Because what happens is the Bibles become tools for other people to just exchange for cigarettes in prisons. And they come out. They never tell you. I mean, how many people have come out and said, hey, you know, I, I got a Bible and that changed my life or I, I started to walk the principles of the Bible? The answer is no one. And unless Kifa knows somebody, nobody found me and said to me that I got a Bible in prison and that helped change my life. So Bibles are stopped. Freebies are stopped. I even wrote to the African Congress and I said, that's it. You guys do not, you guys have never tithed. You've never paid your Zataka. That's it. The spigot stops. You will no longer get any further teachings. You will not get any any, any guidance unless you bring yourself into compliance. You so-called assemblies. Unless you bring yourself into compliance, you are all out. I don't want to hear from you. So this is this is going around the board. You know, this is not uh, uh, this is not just in America. It's everywhere. It's everywhere is the same thing. Those who give, they are dutifully, rightfully deserve the blessings as well. And this is exactly what God says. Those of you who obey the com commandments, who obey the covenants, who love God, those are the ones that God says, I will love you for a thousand, you know, for a thousand generations. He will be with you. But if you, <laughs> if, you if you're like, you know, if, you, if you've been doing what you did in the past, then of course, sadly, you know, that's where, where God's love also stops. God's love is not conditional. 
or unconditional in the sense that you can continue to do whatever you want. You can continue to buy your iPhones and you can continue to just send you money for iPhones. God is not like that. God also has a point, uh, a call, a point of call in where God says, that's it. This is where it stops. So, uh, I'm very happy that this is the case because it saves me a lot of time. It saves Rabbi Kifa a lot of time and so on and so forth. Verse 6 of Exodus chapter 20 says, And showing loving kindness to thousands to those who love me. What does love me mean? It means that you, you dig your hands into your pocket and you do the things that God has asked you to do. That's what love me means. Love me doesn't mean, oh, I love you, Abba, I love you. That's not love you. That's nonsense. We do not follow that nonsense any longer. So unless you, unless you uh, show your love in deed and in action, there is no love. And, you know, ask your, if you're married, ask your spouse and tell your spouse that you love her and don't give her any salary. Just say to her, I love you. And I like to see how long your, your marriage lasts. I like to see how long that home will stand. And I can pretty much assure you that home will start having fightings and that home will not stand for very long. Because even in a marriage, love is just a four letter word. It's meaningless without the action behind it. So going forward, I wanted to just point out that where it actually says that God asked people to give a donation. As you know, Moses was late coming down and people thought Moses was dead. And they actually had a vision seeing Moses in a coffin because Moses took one extra day to come down. And uh, people thought that he is, is kaput, he's gone, he's perished, he's not coming back. And they asked Aaron to make them a god. By the way, when it says Elohi in the Hebrew word, it doesn't necessarily mean a god. It could be the depiction of an angel. It could be the depiction of something else. But it just simply means that that Aaron just simply shrugged his shoulders and said, these people won't listen to me. If I don't make them something, they're going to kill me more than likely. So what he did, he made them a, a, a likeness of an angel. It wasn't a God, by the way, so don't read you know, the wrong information from your Bibles and consider that a God. God is not a statue. Well, yes, but we do, you know, you have seen statues made of angels all over the world. And, you know, there were, there were two statues made of angels in the temple as well. So, yes, yeah, so, so Aaron made a little, call it a statue, you know, of an angel. He said, this is the Elohi. Elohi. Elohi here necessarily doesn't mean gods in plural. It could be sim simply a singular for a majestic being. So this is the majestic being that led you out. It could be an angel that led you out. So Aaron wasn't telling a, a, a fib. He was telling the truth because angels were present when Israel was led out. Angels were everywhere protecting Israel when they were coming out. So in that respect, Aaron actually didn't do anything wrong. He simply presented an angel and said, here you go, here is a, a, a being, a divine being that, that helped let you out. And they were all happy and they all danced and they all sang and they carried on. So, point being that then, you know, other people were given duties. Betzalel was given duty, Ahola was given a duty to to make the uh, the things for the... It wasn't there was, there was no temple by at that time, but there was a... A, a tent of meetings, so they were given duties to make uh, ornaments, things for the tent of the meetings, and so they did do that. So, you know, there was, there was lots of things that needed to be made, menorah, you know, and then there was other things, incense offerings, uh, containers, uh, then there was other items that, you know, loops for the curtains, um, you know, tent pegs and all sorts of items that needed to be made. Anyhow, so these various individuals were involved in that. Very under, uh, important to understand that uh, it also talks about Betzalel. He made the Ark of the Acacia wood. He made the Ark itself of wood, which was nine inches. Uh, it was uh, nine inches uh, length, two feet, three inches width and two feet three inches height and he then you know overlaid it with pure gold inside and outside made a, a molding of gold all around it and then you know there was a cast of four rings of gold to set in his four corners 
and um, so that a pole could be put through it and it could be carried by the priestly clan. So that's basically where the where the Pasha is, is that uh, uh, this the whole idea was to for God's presence to be there, and when God's presence arrives, so people's pleas, prayers, etc., could be heard. Now, I I wanted to point out something that when the reason why these people saw the coffin is this is kind of important. You know, how can people see a coffin of Moses when Moses hadn't died? And the answer is very simple. Is what you believe is what you will see. These people who were on the ground had already believed that Moses was dead. Now, since they had believed Moses was dead, that was in their psychology, that was in their psyche. Therefore, the next bit that they would see, just like normally, if you believed that somebody had died, or if you knew somebody had died, next, of course, you would see their coffin or their dead body. So that's exactly what they, they saw. They saw the dead body of Moses in a coffin, you know, brought to be buried. I think that's very, very instrumental. It's very instrumental in that what you believe is what you will receive. If you are going to believe you are a pauper, you're going to become a pauper. If you believe that you do not have enough money, you will lack money. And by the way, lack by itself doesn't mean that you will lack money. You know, when people don't have money to pay a bill, it doesn't mean that they will always lack to pay a bill. But, you know, this idea that, that you hear from, I guess, law of attraction people that don't lack and, and don't, you know, if you lack, it means it's lack. No, it's not. It's not true. Whatever you believe will be the case according to your belief, it will be done to you. Even you may have lack. Look, when you have lack, you ask for more, right? When you have lack, you ask for more and more will come. So that means this idea that the law of attraction community propels that lack means lack will remain is totally, totally wrong. It is not true. It's only because you lack and you ask and more comes. But more comes when you do more. When you circulate monies, when you circulate monies in the form of ties of the car or in other forms, when you purchase goods, then that money has to return. It has to return because money is energy. And energy will cling to certain people and certain people it will not cling to. Uh, it's a behavior issue. And whatever the behavior is, that's who the money will cling to. So therefore, always keep an open mind. Always keep yourself in check. Always make sure that you do the right thing and money will stay with you. Money will stay with you because you believe it to be the case. If you believe it to be the case, then money will be with you. If you do not believe it, money will not stay with you. And if you continue to uh, whine, because the Bible does tell us that we should not whine and the Bible does tell us that we should not backbite and the Bible tells us that we should not tail bear. When we do, you know, when we go do those things, and sadly, not even sadly, naturally, human beings tend to do that. You know, you know, you you have a story to tell, or some something happened somewhere, and you may go from one place to another. Friend, maybe, maybe relatives, cousins, etc. And you go and tell the story of such and such woman, such and such thing happened, her son died, her son got a job, or whatever, etc. So, uh, in a way, tail-bearing was forbidden because the reason why is that the tail-bearing, it, it kind of takes over our mind. Because when we're in tail-bearing mode, then we continue to think about that item. When we continue to think about that item, we forget about our own desire. We forget our, about our own need and we continue to focus on the wrong thing. When we continue to focus on the wrong thing, the wrong thing comes. Therefore, tail bearing was not permitted. It's not because tail bearing by itself is evil. No, it's not that tail bearing is evil. It's what it, what it does. It occupies a space of our mind. When it occupies a space of our mind, it then allows us not to occupy ourselves with stuff that we want stuff that we need or when we occupy with stuff that we need instead of stuff that I want to tell Joe Bloggs next door 
then of course things are totally, totally different. So I'd like to thank you for listening. I'm going to pass to Rabbi Kifa and I'd also like to say this, that uh, the next message that Rabbi Kifa records for you privately, I will be forwarding it to you. And until as wisdom is given, as the Lord God of Israel gives me wisdom, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, he gives me wisdom, he gives me direction, I will certainly be sending you more snippets as as the time goes by. So look after yourselves, be be well. Those of you who want to connect with us regarding Torah and want to be compliant, you have Rabbi Kifa's telephone number on the website, abrahamic-faith.info, forever-israel.com. There are telephone numbers there. There's lots of material there that you can go and study. There are lots of books out there that you can purchase from Amazon. There's a lot of stuff out there already that you can study. And where you get stuck, you know, we'll only answer questions to those that are the doers. And the rest, well, the rest to us are like, uh, uh, they're like refugees, you know. We don't care about them, period. Refugees can remain outside of the Torah camp. And I, and I for one, don't really care about it any longer. You know, if you're a refugee, if you're outside the Torah camp, you've got nothing to do with us. Thank you very much for coming. Have a great, wonderful day. Shabbat Shalom. In our history, to really understand, uh, and for I really want you to get it. You know, so, so that way there's no confusion. And if you that they're in the work, there's shakings going on, and there's war, right? They're, they're, they're trying to hype up people for whatever rhyme or reason. And they're trying to put people in fear. And not only are they trying to put people in fear, but they're playing off the emotions of the fears of those people. You know, to die for that Yael woman of the tent. The USA is the number one oil producer. Now tell me this, and I asked Akoyin this question, and that was one of his questions as well, is if we're the number one oil producer here in in, in America, then by golly gee willikers, how come our gas prices are pushing here in San Antonio $4, actually three ninety nine a gallon? Can anybody answer that question? Anybody want to take a shot at pray tell why are our gas prices going up now if somebody lives somewhere here in north america where your gas prices haven't gone up can you tell me where that is please but i mean that's just a, a just a question anybody ever thought about that you're like if if we're the number one oil producer there you go devora there you go it's all about and how has been saying this Students, pay attention to what he's been saying this. It's all about making money. I mean, there's a war going on right now that has nothing to do with America. Do you all understand that right now? That that war, as a matter of fact, if you all understand this, and and, 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 and please, if you haven't learned nothing from the, the Kohen, you need to understand that we need to be brushed up and really understand history. I mean, it's the understanding of Hakoin's history that brought me back into our way of life. That brought me back to who I am. Because Hakoin understood and knows history. Do, do you all understand that? It was him knowing history. That history of what they call the Bible is actually actually the history of a family. I was never taught it that way, but that's that's the facts on the ground. You see, so so history is very, very important to know, not only your history, but you need to know the history of others. You, you really do. And, 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 you know, I believe out of all the religions that are out there, Islam is really up on this because they really know history. Uh, I know a lot of Muslims that know history. How many of you are with me on that? These guys know history. It's like they study it and they know history because the histories are that, that's that's the facts. Christianity don't teach you no history. <laughs> they just want to fill you with mumbo jumbo. 
Catholicism definitely don't want to teach you no history. They just want to tell you just, you know, keep Jesus on the cross. <laughs> you know what I mean? But those Islam, I mean, they really, really study history. And they give you the facts. You know, whether folks can handle it or not. How come you send me this leak this week? About this guy, boy, he gave a shellacking to, to, to all of these, these, these superpowers, as they call themselves, and how they went in and colonized all these nations. And he just, he really gave them a, a lashing with, with what history, what really happened, and how the superpowers actually came in. This guy, I think he's from India. He has a, he has a strong accent, but he just gave him a shellacking and he told them, you guys are telling us about all of this global warming, but you guys were the one that, that caused all these things. You went into all these countries and raped and pillaged these countries and introduced all of these bad things to these countries and then you got the nerve to tell us about how we need to cut back on things? Oh man, he, he gave them a shellacky, an educated shellacky on history. So it's very important, students, that we understand and we know history. And if you understand and know history, you'll realize that Russia they're having a, and they're fighting their brothers right now. Did you know the majority of the people in Ukraine speak Russian? So this is, this is what we would call a modern day civil war going on. Does that have anything to do with you or I? No, it doesn't. That has nothing to do with me. And <laughs> you think about it for <laughs> That has nothing to do with you or, you or I. They're fighting. This is a sibling rivalry going on right now. And they're fighting. Two brothers are fighting. And one day they'll make up and get over it or, you know, they'll just be, you know, at odds for the rest of, you know, for, uh, you know, uh, years or centuries or however long it takes for them to come back together. But these are just brothers fighting. So what does that have to do with us? Let me tell you what it has to do with us. Like I Cohen said, students of I Cohen, it's all about that dollar bill. Why? Because if you look at the natural gas lines that run through and that it, Run through uh, Europe, the buck stops where? Surprise, surprise, Ukraine. So, again, we only over there for profit. But again, why are our gas prices high? It's because this month, you know, you know, everybody around the world trying to make money off of this. And that's what's going on. It's a money maker. So you need you need to look at this from a bigger picture. It's a. It's a bigger picture than what they, and, 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 and you gotta block out all the noise. And this is just what's happening with the family, with Israel today. Hakoin is taking Israel and we're setting up a tent. It said, we were taking a journey and we're setting up a tent. I want you all to understand this. And what he wants to do is protect Israel at all costs. Israel has to be protected. And whose responsibility is that? It's the Kohen in the gate. And he has to protect Israel. So he's taking Israel and he's blocking Israel away from all the noise. <laughs> what do you mean noise, uh, Rabbi Keeper? There's a lot of noise around Israel right now. And see, Israel cannot be successful if Israel's concerned with the noise. So he has to separate Israel from the noise and, and, and move on with whatever Israel is left after the noise. You see? And that's just what's going on. Because look, I want you to see, I'm going to tell you an awesome story <laughs> about our history. It's just awesome. The God of Israel, with his mighty right hand, took a people out of bondage and out of slavery, a people that was subjugated, a people that was mistreated, a people that was wrong, a people that he called his people, that he, that, the, the apple of his eye, his people. He made, uh, uh, and so he took this people and he made, he made contracts or what we would call covenants. Because I want you to see this whole thing. How many of you see yourself not only as a student of Hakoin, but at a, as a businessman or a businesswoman? Because you are. Let me tell you, if you don't, you need to start seeing yourself that way. Because life is a business at the end of the day. And you know what businesses are? And I told this to the, to the students because my, my lectures, my first lecture already went out to, to the duels. You know who you are. I'm not here trying to shame anybody. But if you got the lecture this morning, you got it. You know, before Shabbat, I put the lecture out and I did that on purpose. And you all know why in, in the lecture. You'll hear it when you, when you listen to it. 
So you you gotta you gotta understand is what you gotta understand is that 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 we we have a certain pattern that we follow. Sometimes we stay put, and then when it's time to move, we gotta pick up and we have to go. But that direction has to be taken from a particular man. The businessman. Let me tell you, Moses was one of the best businessmen you ever want to meet on the face of this earth. He ran a, a, a major corporation, didn't he? He ran a, a Fortune 500 company, didn't he? If Eddie's is in the room, that's what he did. <laughs> he did, and so he took a people with a goal of say, "Look, I'm going to get you to the promised land, a land that's flowing with milk and honey." Well, let's just see what happens. So, so, so the Most High, he took this people. His people. And he said, look, I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to, I'm bringing protection to you. Don't worry. I got your back. And he took this people out of that bondage and that slavery. And he, and he moved them. He put them on the move. He put them on the go. And they went not to the promised land flowing with milk and honey real quick, but they went out into the desert. And they went out into the desert and they stayed there for a minute. Can anybody tell me why they stayed in the desert for a minute? Why did they just not go into the land flowing milk and honey right away? Can anybody tell me that? I really want you all to understand this so you'll understand that the, the, the relevance and the severity and the importance of what's, what's happening. This is historical what's happening in, 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 in the history of Israel. Anybody want to take a shot at why we just couldn't just go right into the land flowing with milk and honey, take the Hebrew just right on in? Strategy, okay, that's a reason. Uh, they were not ready. They needed to be uh, prepared to enter into it. These are all great answers. Great answers. But the Most High said he took us, they took the people into the desert. Why? Because the desert is the proving grounds. How many of you ever heard that word? Need to prove you in our books. Need to prove you. You got to go to the proving ground. You got to get out there and you got to get into the proving ground. What happens in the proving grounds? Okay, we're going to see if everything that you said with your mouth is going to be backed up with your actions. Actions equals what? Belief. What you believe is what you're going to act upon. So let's just take you out here in the desert. So, desert for a while, our people. And you and I stayed, and then all of a sudden, it was time to go into that promised land flowing with milk and honey. And I tell you right now, with every part of my being, that I am in the land flowing with milk and honey now. Anybody want to affirm that with me? Anybody want to affirm that with me? I'm in the land flowing with milk and honey now. I'm not waiting on it now, and I'm definitely not still wandering in the, in the, in the desert. Now, <laughs> there are different kind of wanderings. You know, you could wonder like a lot of Israel is doing without leadership and without that CEO and COO in, in the coin in the gate. Or you could wander in the desert with it. And I prefer, like I did, to wander with, <laughs> with the coin in the gate as I go through the desert. Look, I'm going to stick to Moses. Like the Hebrews said, look, I'm going to stick with Moses throughout this journey. I'm not going to just get out here like some of them did. They got there and they want to go back. And they wanted, and they went out there and they were affirming, I'm going to die in the desert. And guess what they did? They died in the desert. And they never, they never kept the motivation of land flowing with milk and honey, land flowing with milk and honey, land flowing with milk and honey. No, you took us out here to die. You took us out here to die. You took us out here to die. And that's just what happened. So here's what's going on today, Mishpah, as I tell you this wonderful story. That's also a pattern that you can see replicated throughout of our, all of our history. Is that sometimes people are going to face, well, let's just say people are going to be in bad situations. And then somebody's going to come along and rescue them and protect them and get them out of that bad situation. And move them through experience after experience into a great situation. Into a better situation. Into the best situation they ever had in their life. Now, right now, today in 2022, here's where the history comes in for Israel today. Is Israel has been ushered in and moved in by the headship and leadership of the Kohen and the gate has been placed for this period in history to take us and move us to another place 
And where is that place? Into the land flowing with milk and honey. What has that queen been telling us? Oh, look, whatever you want, you in heaven. There is no heaven when you die. You heaven now. Or you in hell now, whichever one you want to be in. But look, here are the tools for you to get and, and meet all your desires. That sounds like that sounds like milk and honey to me. That's sweet. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. You see? And 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 with that headship of our coin, that's where we are today. We're in the land flow with milk and honey. What do you desire? You can have it. What do you want? You can have it. You, you see where we are? But not when I say we, maybe not all of us are there. Some of us are still in the desert and we wonder. And that's just what's happening right now. There's a separation that's occurring from those who still want to wander in the desert, going around in circles, to those who want to enter in to the land flowing with milk and honey. Uh oh, and this is where you're going to see the cutoff. This is totally where you're going to see the cutoff now. You're going to see it. You're going to experience for yourself right now. Because now the milk and the meat is in the land flowing with milk and honey. And if you're not in the land flowing with milk and honey, then Pray tell, you cannot get the milk and the meat. Now, I asked you the question earlier. Who are the students of our Kohen? And a lot of you put up an S and to die for that. You put up that S to die for that. Now listen, students. Why when you become a student, you don't automatically, you know, graduate and get a diploma and everything is cool. No, the student must be brought in the desert. Just like the children of Israel, you got to be brought in the desert and you have to be given standards. You have to be given requirements so that you can meet those requirements and you can comply and then move on and elevate yourself as a student. You see, so we need to lay out the blueprint so there's no confusion. I want I I, I don't I don't even recognize confusion because it doesn't exist when you have the facts in front of you. Or when the instruction is laid out to you clear as day, like it has been for two, two and two and a half some odd years, it's just been laid out and laid out and repeated like a parrot over and over and over again. And so here we are. You're going to find here's here's the choice you're going to have to make. You're going to have to, you know, comply. Or keep wandering in the desert, comply. And go into the land flowing with milk and honey, or just continue wandering in the desert. Without that leadership, without that CEO, without that COO, without that owner of that business. And, the, and guess what? The Fortune 500 company is moving on. It's moving on. And you're left behind. Because you desire, you made the decision, not so much by what you say, but by your actions, what you do. See, the doers will do. And then the non-doers will do too. <laughs> you see, that there's doing going on both ways. But then the only person you have to look at is yourself. And you got to prepare. You. Somebody said it earlier. When you're in the desert, it's a preparation mode. You're preparing for something. You're preparing for something better. You see, because you want to meet all the requirements, you see, to move up. In your particular business, nobody wants to start out at McDonald's and continue working, you know, working the grill and flipping the burger. No, they have the aspiration of starting out at McDonald's and then next becoming managers. You know what I mean? Because the managers at McDonald's, correct me if I'm wrong, but they making good money these days. They're really good money these days with great benefits, by the way, at McDonald's. So. So, so students, this is going out to you. And I know some of you are going to listen to this recording and be able to get this. Hakoin said McDonald's is losing $50 million every month thanks to the, thanks to the sanctions. Wow. That's another big thing that we'll talk about. You know. And, and, and by the way, I want to tell you this. These lectures, they, they're going to come out as in both my gives them. So for you doers, you know, you may get a lecture on Monday, get one on one Wednesday, may get one, you know, you know, you may get one a week, you may get two a week, three a week, it just depends. As you see what I go and he's doing, he's already put several out to the doers already. 
you know. So you, you guys see see what's going on here. So so it's, it, there's a progression. You don't just have to sit down and, and just wait on Shabbat to show up and we come in the power talk form. No, this power talk form is the desert. It's preparing. It's preparing. It's preparing those who are going to be ready to take the next level to the upper echelons of the milk and the meat. You see, the power talk is the water, and it's the tap water, by the way. You may you may be getting a little bit of, of the living waters in the tap water, but it's the tap water until that water becomes less bitter and less full of fluoride. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all of that's going to depend upon what? Uh, on you. Because what we're going to do as students of human nature is sit back and watch. We're going to pop the popcorn and sit back and watch the actions. Watch your performance. Watch your reaction to the requirements. And then make a, a sound judgment based upon that. How many of you are following me right now? I just want you to understand. How many of you you don't understand? And if you don't understand what I'm saying, or you, you, you know, please let me know, because I'll break it down even further for you. But I want you to all to understand. You know, you, you're just not in the desert to look at cactus out there. There's a purpose for the desert. The desert is a great place to be. If you have a proper instruction and guide to guide you through the desert, then you'll make it through and you won't get your shoes dirty or worn out. Ruka Shia. How many know about that in our history? How you gonna wander through the desert and not get your shoes worn out? Come on now. Hey, you can't do that for you. <laughs> Shoot. You go through about 12 pairs, sneakers. You have to own some of Nike just to get through with Hagee. But your shoes going to wear out. You have you all over the place. When you've got proper direction and instruction, man, the desert is actually paradise. To duck for your responses, by the way. So here's what's going to happen, students. Brother David says, I was, I, I was walking now. I got a camel. Rukashim. My goodness. Rukashim. So here we go, students. This is what's going to be required. For those of you who are listening in on Facebook, or you may be listening on YouTube later, here's the requirements. Spit them out. Number one, a student will be a student for six months and will be monitored for six months. What are we doing? We wandered in the wilderness. Six months. Now, in those six months, you have to meet all compliance. And you have to be doing to be a doer, right? So you're going to meet all the compliance. That's tithing, Zedekah. Number two, students, you're going to have to make sure that you have the proper books. At minimum, you're going to need the Abrahamic Faith Bible. You're going to need your Forever Israel Sador. You're also going to need your Feast of Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. And also, I'm a third, I'm going to throw in another fourth one because I quite mentioned this to me this morning. And uh, I'm the Patriarchal Marriage Book. Because again, everything in life is about relationships. Business, if you don't have business relationships, great ones, your business will never be successful. Correct me if I'm wrong. But if you have great business relationships, your business is going to flourish and it's going to grow. So we need to understand relationships with the Hebrew hat on from a Hebraic point of view. Listen to me now. So those are going to be the four required books that you must have. If you phone into us or send us an email and say, and you got all these questions, but you don't have those books, because I guarantee you, all your questions going forward have already been asked and answered in these books. And if not only that, there's other resources like the forever-israel.com website. That's an excellent website that can answer all of your questions. And not only that, you can go to YouTube and listen to all these lectures, these old lectures that the whole world had privy to. I mean, we're talking about treasure chest lectures about our way of life and how we live and how you can succeed and propel yourself in life and bring yourself to peace, love, joy, and happiness in this world. Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful is our, our way of life is wonderful. It is, but it's not wonderful for everybody. We all know that and we get that. And so the six month time period, and you need to reach out to us and and let us know that you knew so we can all we can be monitoring you. And this is another reason why we'll always keep this forum open. 
this Pow Talk form because it is the desert. So we got to keep up with everybody. We got to make sure nobody's straggling that don't want to be straggling. You know what I mean? And as you all, your light is shining in these nations, you're going to attract certain people to you. And I would encourage you, students of our Kohen, to recommend that everybody that considered themselves under the umbrella of Moshe and his, and his Torah is to put them at the feet of the Kohen. It's to bring them in and say, hey, you got to come to this power talk for them. You got to start doing these requirements. You got to start lining up. You got to start what? Preparing yourself for what? That land flowing with milk and honey. Because that land flowing with milk and honey is real. But a lot of people, when you come in new, like some of you have, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you knew you only been here for a short period of time, all of this stuff is like really confusing to you. And it's like, man, that's a lot of stuff for you to swallow. Correct me if I'm wrong. And be honest with yourself. You'd be like, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, this is this is heavy. This is heavy meat. I'm eating the steak and I'm just a baby. I just come into the way. So we're just not we're not going to throw it to you that way. That's 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 wrong. That's not just that's not right. That's not fair. You must be brought up a certain way. That's why you have that six months. You fill it out and see if this way of life is for you, because like I quite says in his emails, not everybody can handle it. So what's the use in us going through Parsha after Parsha, uh, you know, you know, golden nugget after golden nugget when, when you're not even in compliance? And then you wonder why you don't see any physical presentation or manifestation happening in your life. Because the two don't twine. You got to be in compliance. My goodness, you don't think Moses was angry? You know, why do you think Moses felt about compliance? When he came down the Mount Sinai, my goodness, with the tablets etched with the finger of the Most High, the finger of Elohim as it's told in our books, our holy books. And then he saw these people doing the electric slide with the golden calf, calf dancing around, got the little golem down there dancing around that they created. And they're supposed to be Moses' people, his employees. But they went, they went after, he left for a while, and they went after another boss. They said, well, we need another boss. I'm paraphrasing. Oh, we need another boss. What a slap in the face, correct? Come on now. So we have to have, we got the compliance. You know, you we got, we, we have all the information that we need. We got all the instruction. The instruction is there. The way to live our lives is the Torah. We got the instruction. We got the understanding on how to uh, uh, apply the instruction from the Kohen and the gate. And then you just have to put it to work for you. And you're going to see, you doers, you guys are in, I, I tell you what, you guys' lives are getting ready to really, really change to the upside. Increase after increase after increase on top of increase. But you're saying, Rabbi, keeping them already increased. No, but you can never get too increased. <laughs> You can never get too benefited, Bukashim. Because why? You stay at the feet of the Kohen. And you all know, you doers who have been here for a while, people have come and gone and come and gone and come and gone here. But those who stay and those who don't stray from the, from the feet of the Kohen, my goodness, you are in the land flowing with milk and honey, whether you realize it or not. You really are. You really are. And if you can't see that, then something's wrong. Don't be anticipating something on the other side when you take your last breath. You know, heaven is right now. Or you in hell right now. So understand that going forward. I want to make sure that's crystal clear. There's a six-month door that you have. Not six years. Not 40 years in the desert. For six months. And you, you know, we, this would be the filter to see, okay, who's sincere? We're going to look at the deeds. That's how a true judge will judge our individuals by their deeds and their actions. And that's just it at the end of the day. You can make a sound judgment based upon deed and action. That's a great way to establish for relationship. You put those two together equals relationship. Deed and action equals good relationship or bad relationship. A relationship you can get in or a relationship you should run away from. That's it at the end of the day. 
You see, because just like we see it in, in by 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 your kale, this this parsha here by your hill, this parsha is dealing with the tent crashing in the tent. Who is the tent today? Do, are we fashioning a tent in Israel? No. Hakohen is the tent. He is the tent. The son of Aaron. They're the tent. The sons of Aaron. We got to fashion that tent. And, and, and those that will be called will come in. Those that will accept that call will stay. Many, many will be called. Isn't that what Reba Yeshua? Yeshua ben Yosef? Jesus of Nazareth said, he said, many are called, but only few are chosen. Only few are chosen. I can't rem remember, well, I haven't, uh, I can't remember, and maybe Hakoi can tell you when the last time he chose a student. I haven't chose a student for, for years. Matter of fact, to be honest with you, I've never chose a student. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> You see, because it's the teacher who chooses the student. It's not the student who chooses the teacher. See, many, many, many are called in to the power talk room, but only few will be chosen. You see? And what do we base that upon? Deed in action. Deed in action. Deed in action. And when your actions speak, believe me, you will, you will garner the attention of the teacher. Your actions will speak for you. Not your words. They're mere words, but action will speak for you. So consider that going forward. Uh, during these power talk forums, I'm only going to allot 30 minutes and I'm shed it. I'm going to shut it down. Because this is the desert. And I'm thirsty. <laughs> no, this is the desert though. This is the desert. So, uh, if you guys have any questions going forward, please. Shoot us emails. Matter of fact, if you have any questions right now, please shoot us emails. Uh, or you can, you can ask your question now, but this is where we are going forward. This is historical. We're moving now. We've been, we've been stationary for a while, but this is the first time that I'm seeing Hakohin and Rabbi Zakaria will tell you Hakohin has got that fire back. Rabbi Zakaria, I just want to let you know it's back. He's got that fire back and he's not taking any shit no more. Just let you know. <laughs> Rabbi Zakaria would know exactly what I'm talking about because this, this is, this is, this is the Akohin of old <laughs> right here. And for those of you who've been around for a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And he don't play games and we should not be playing games with our Torah as well, our way of life. We don't play games. So on that note, I'm going to wrap it up unless somebody has some questions. If anybody has any questions, because I want to make sure this is crystal clear, Ms. Baha going forward you see you come here you're going to get water I'm just letting you know in your emails for the doers that's where the milk and the meat is going to be just to let you know just to let you know you're going to get some water you may get a little living water in there you know a little living water in there with the tap desert water you know what I mean but that's going to be about it because these are the proving grounds you got to prove yourself now you got to prove yourself. And we're guardians of this Torah. So we're just not going to just give out this stuff to any old Joe Blog. This is trash, man. This is valuable information that we must honor and we must respect. And we must hold and we must cherish it, protect it. And that's, that's by, by golly, Chief Willikers, that's just what we're going to do. I'm under the leadership of our Kohen. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So on that note, we'll wrap it up and I'll say Shabbat Shalom and Shalom Shalom to all of you. Have a great six days of labor ahead and be on the lookout do us with some more lectures coming your way that's pertinent and pinpointed to where we're heading and that's going to be beneficial to us to meet our desires and to move forward through Hashem and to learn about our history and who we are and how we, how, what we do in these nations right now. What are we supposed to be doing? How do we capitalize off every situation? You know, we should be capitalized. And Jojo says, what are the four books we need? Okay, they're going to be the Abrahamic Faith Bible, number one, the Forever Israel Sador. And, oh, by the way, all these books can be purchased on Amazon.com. Or if you want hardback, you can go to Lulu, L-U-L-U.com as well. So you're going to have the Abrahamic Faith Bible, 
or what we call the hit to be break scrolls. You're going to have the forever Israel Sador. You're going to have the feast of Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. And you're going to have the patriarchal marriage book. Very important book because that deals with how our relationships are run. And believe me, our relationships are not run the way these Gentiles are running them because they're making a mockery of, 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 of good men and good women on this earth. Because they're not just, they're not right, and not they're not fair. They say one thing in in their vows, to death do your part, and then they they they're giving you something totally different in their actions. Sound familiar? <laughs> you know what I mean? So again, we we must establish sound, great, awesome relationships. That's what we're gonna do. Relationships gonna be awesome. That's what that's what life is about relationships, Mister Hall. So the relation relationships have been established. So. Okay, I want to make sure, JoJo Dancer, did you get those four books? You get them down, pin them down. These are the books you're going to need going forward. And not only get them, you got to read them. <laughs> you got to read them. You got to study them. So, so again, you can have an understanding of where we're coming from and your heritage, by the way, if you consider yourself descendants of the Hebrews. You got to read them. All those questions are going to be answered in there. Now, if you do have questions after you read a certain passage yourself, that's when you send our coin an email, or that's when you send me an email, or give me a phone call. I'll talk to you. How many of you are, are watchers and witnesses of me actually talking to you in the room? Put up a put up a team. If you say, "Yeah, Rabbi Kim, he, he he calls you back. He'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Just you know, I'll do it. Believe me, I'll, <laughs> I will talk to you. I'll talk to you. You just gotta just give me a, give me a phone call. I'll talk to you. But again, it's very important that we establish this. This is us going forward. I'm telling you, it's awesome. I'm excited. I'm super excited. So that's that's it. That's it. I, I went on. Okay. Uh, what about? Do we still purchase? Oh my goodness! Of course, yes, we do. Lion princess. Now, not for the women, for the men. Yes, not for the women, as you'll find out if you if you read in in our books that the question's already been asked and answered. But yeah, that's the question. That is the answer. Of course. Of course, that's our history. That's who we are. That's our remembrance. So on that note, I'm wrapping it up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Lion Princess. Yes, you do. Absolutely. You do. So any other questions before we go out? Believe me, you have a voice. You have a say. You know, here's the time to make your say or make your in, in front of the family here. You want to make your say. You're in the desert. You can talk. Believe me. Then our ancestors, they had many talks in the desert. Had some. Had some uprisings as well, right? <laughs> sure did, didn't it? So that's what happens when you're in the desert. You got to iron things out. So here's the ironing out. You have the requirements. Now, let's meet them with our deeds and our actions. Boom. And it's a win-win. You know, you have to have a road map to get where you're going. Who wants to wander in the desert forever? I don't. And I won't. And I'm not. I'm in the land flowing with milk and honey, baby. All thanks to my Kohen in the gate, Rabbi Simon out there. That's, uh, do you still sell the mezuzah? Yes, we do. We still have the mezuzah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And now I'm understanding why the Imhokma told me to hold off on all of this awesome materials. Oh, and by the way, there's other things that you need as well. Of course, that you need to start supplying your home with, like your, yeah, your mezuzah and your menorahs. All these things. This is us. This is who we are. You should have these things in your home. The 72 names, all that stuff. But now I see why the Imhokma told me to hold off for all. And I've been, I've been holding on this stuff for a very, very long time. Very, no, no, no. You got to contact me directly for, for those, those supplies that I may have. You got to contact me directly. And again, I'm just not going to give that out to everybody. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm telling you. So again, I, I have to guard this. This is, this is our way of life. I'm getting up, put these things in your house and, you know, you, you, you're disrespecting the Most High and making Moses drop the tablets because he's so infuriated with, with, with the actions of his people. No, man. We got to clean this up, right? Oh, I see why. I was wondering why I haven't got the green light to just start dishing this stuff out like candy because it's not candy. It's chocolate, and I love chocolate, by the way. Now I see why. I see why now. I was like, my goodness, I'm still hanging on to these things over here. Now I see why. Now I see why. Because it's not for everybody. 
It's not. It's for Yah's people, his chosen people. Not the frozen, but the chosen. Which one are you? <laughs> Ask yourself that on this day. So any more questions, please shoot them out. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it open. You have you have a voice here. You get get it all out. Get it all out. Because you know what? If you guys, you know, contact me, you know what I'm gonna say? I'm gonna ask you, do you have those first books? That's the first thing I'm gonna ask you. Do you have those 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 books that are required? Let's start meeting those requirements first, bare minimum. Then we can kick it up a few notches. This is what we have to do. This is the way we gotta be the guardians of this. And Hakoin is ready to rock and roll with that. Because believe me, he's been totally patient and given a lot of long suffering. I'm telling you, but again, that's where we are. And that's where we're heading, Israel. Do you want to come? And you don't have to give me a yes or a no because your actions will, will let me know that you want to come. Oh, you are already there, Rukashem. You are already there. I'm, I'm, you are already there. So again, that's what we need to consider going forward. And that's all that I have for the family <laughs> on this side of it. But be on the lookout for some more uh, 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 doer lectures that are come uh, during the week, during the six days. I love doing that. I, I think it's pretty cool. I like that. And any other questions? Anybody have anything else before I release the mic? Maybe Hakoin has some final words. If not, that's it. If I miss something, Hakoin, please tell me because I want to make sure I cover it, cover it, and we got it on recording so that way the people will know. People will have a, a great. Uh, they'll know exactly the stance of Israel, not the fake fake Israel, but the real Israel going forward. Okay, great. So Shabbat Shalom, Shalom, Shalom to all of you, Mishpacha. Have a great six days of labor here. Ah uh, yes, uh, to down for that Rabbi Kifa. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, to down for that Rabbi Kifa. I think that's about it. You covered everything uh, that they need to know. There is a calendar already online on the Abrahamic Faith info website that can download. It's free of charge. And um, after that, I guess. Uh, I guess after that, any questions? You you have all the email addresses. You have Rabbi Kifa's telephone number that you can, you know, just shoot him a message and he can respond back to you. With that, we'll close it because connection is a little weak at this end. Have a great day and uh, more pertinent messages will come your way. Rest assured. There's a, there's a lot going on across the world and there's a lot of fake information out there, but don't worry about it. <laughs> Real information will be filtered back to you. In due course, to da, shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom.